Welcome to the second episode of Eyes East, our series about the recovery of Christchurch's eastern flatland suburbs. In this episode, we focus on the values and guiding principles communities want to see in the redevelopment of the east. The top four from last year's Evo Space consultation were keeping communities safe from natural hazards, building back clean, green and sustainable, rebuilding strong connected communities, and supporting healthy lifestyles. We will explore what some of these mean in practice in the coming episode. Firstly, let's focus on the natural hazards we need to consider in the East Christchurch. To understand these in more detail, I talked to Dr. Jedry Hart and Dr. Chris Gomez, natural hazards scientists at the University of Canterbury, and began by asking Dr. Hart to explain liquefaction to us. Um, so here I'm going to explain liquefaction and we've prepared an example of the ground beneath Christchurch. So the ingredients to make liquefaction are that you need a very high water table, you also need the right kind of sediments, the coastal and the fluvial or river laid down sediments that Christchurch sits on. Then you add a bit of shaking from an earthquake and we'll just do that now. So you can see that sort of jelly-like movement. What seemed like solid ground before now has turned into um, a jelly-like liquid during the shaking process and the water's risen up to the surface. The water gets ejected and as it gets ejected up to the surface it takes some sediment with it. Um, when we remove that material from the surface, we take away the, the liquefaction sand, then the ground that's left behind is lowered and it's more compacted, so its properties have changed. So what's happening in the earthquake is you've got a liquid layer underneath where the water table is, and Chris has rafted the surface, which has just sort of slid on that liquid layer. Now, if that happens in an area where there are no banks and no rivers, it can just slide one way and slide back again, um, and it can pretty much end up in the same spot. But where you have a bank, you've got no support. So it'll slide and it'll just sort of fall over into the river channel. The sides come in, they spread, lateral spreading, um, and also the bed of the channel comes up. So you've no longer got much river capacity. Because we built on a swamp that was partially drained, the whole city is on a very low-lying coastal plain. And with any rise in the level of the ocean, um, we're prone to flooding from the coastal side, but it also blocks our drain. It's like putting the plug in your sink when you've still got the tap on, you're going to start to fill up that swampy city sink. With the earthquake, Christchurch has seen about 100 years of relative sea level rise, meaning that the base level of the sea and the water are closer to our feet, basically. So what happened in the estuary right here, when the rivers come in, it has more difficulty to escape so more water will build up in the waterways. When you have rainfall then, the water will quickly go up and flood the rest of the city. And it's a difficult problem because if you try to dredge or dig into the channel, it's not going to solve the problem. If you just take sediment, let's say, the bottom like I do now, of the river, you're creating a big hole at the bottom, but the level of the water is still the same. So we've got flooding coming from inland, we've got flooding coming from the sea, and the flooding coming from the sea is increasing with climate change as the sea level rises. Where the liquefaction zones will move um, westward underneath our city with the rise in water level, which responds to sea level. Sea level rise is also an issue for things like coastal erosion, because the earthquake changes the land levels, and the land levels influence the drainage system, which influences the flooding hazard, from a landward side with water draining out to sea. It influences the inundation of the sea inland, just normal tides as well as with tsunami waves. We need to have a really integrated look at multiple hazards to reshape a more resilient city for the future. So when you look at the earthquake effects that we've had in Christchurch, you need to think about all of the other hazard cascades and we need to prepare people and prepare our settlement to deal with those multiple hazards together. So what can we do to keep communities safe from these hazards? To answer this, we have in the studio Dr. Deirdre Hart, architect Jason Mill, and Helen Beaumont from the Christchurch City Council. 
Helen, can I direct that question to you first? City Council has a number of sort of legislative mechanisms it can use. The primary one would be our district plan. So district plan rules enable people like Jason to, um, to look at the hazards and then adapt to them. We have to follow the legislation that's put forward by the council um, as professionals. Uh, so we are sort of, you know, the next cab on the rank, we get that information and then we have to interpret into how that's going to affect built structure. Spent a lot of time in Southeast Asia on uh, um, villages that are completely on poles on the water and for centuries have just ridden the changes. So very, very adaptive, um, touching the earth lightly and also sort of sacrificial type ground floors or uh, some of the New Orleans type thing where you get up off the ground floor or you know we've done houses that we can hose out because they're all concrete so a flood could come and be cleaned up very quickly. We've got a good understanding of how the coastal hazards have been exacerbated by the earthquakes and particularly with climate change coming at us that there'll be further exacerbation. Council has done a lot of work, provided a lot of information, and that's just the start of a conversation with the community about how we live in our city. So where we live, how we carry out developments to make sure we're more resilient in the future, and then in the very long term, what areas might we actually have to start retreating from? And how could we manage that in a much more dignified fashion than perhaps we had with the red zones and the earthquakes? I think one of the potential opportunities we have is to look at sensible forms of development in those areas. So we have some predictions around sea level rise, we now have a much greater knowledge around liquefaction zones and the change in our flood hazard that we've got today and that we're likely to get into the future. So we can examine our different areas spatially and decide where retreat would be a sensible option and in other areas where we can live with the ecosystem and the hazards that we've got and still develop those areas without doing too much damage either to people or to the landscape that they're living in. And there are a number of things that need to happen to, to enable that to, um, to take place. And the, the first thing is much more in-depth conversations with our communities. So we understand how communities wish to evolve and adapt to these sort of changes. So I agree with this communication and information and discussions with the community so they really do understand what it means. And I think we're in a really positive place for those discussions to occur in Christchurch because the community has a high level of awareness of natural hazards and one lesson that we've all learnt from the earthquakes is that the stamp of past environments, even where we've built over the top of them, will still come through when you have natural hazard events. We need a greater focus in terms of a national policy framework to deal with these issues. Uh, we have some guidance but we don't really have legislative mechanisms for things like a retreat over the very long term. This discussion obviously is a very important one and is only really just getting started in Christchurch. However, it will be one that needs to take place in many cities around New Zealand and around the world in the future. Coming up, we switch our focus onto building back smarter and more sustainably. <laughs>